I've, again, I've got my white and my burnt umber. For me, those are kind of my bookends. And then I've got a cool and a warm of my yellows, my reds, and my blues. So I've got a cool and a warm of each one of those. So right now I haven't pared down my palette at all um, effectively. I'm just kind of using the, the primary palette of, with warms and cools of everything. So I'm just going to squeeze these suckers out. So all I want to do is I just want to to, um, and we're going to mark this down. I just want to give you guys some tools on some simple color mixes that I use. Okay, again, I'm saying that emphatically. I use these colors mixes, but that doesn't make them the only way to make these colors, right? This is just the way that I do it. So we're going to start with some gold. So like in my teacups, how do I make the golds? I get that question a lot, so I'm going to show you guys how I do it. What I'm going to find a lot of times is there might be a hard edge around the outer edge of the, the metal, but inside it's a soft edge. And so this is what I'm talking about. So I'm going to start with burnt umber. And I'm not adding water to my paint. I'm just using solid paint. So I'm going to do a line of metal, like it's, a, like it's just a, a strip of metal that imagine it's a ring that you're looking straight down on. Okay, so I'm starting with just my burnt umber as the base color, believe it or not. If I need a black, I'm going to mix a little bit of blue in with that brown to get a dark value. And I'm going to make it a soft edge on the inside. So I'm going to have it be glowing in the center. I'm going to have it be darker on the outer edges. Okay, I'm working on white paper right now. Now I'm going to clean off my brush because I had that mix of blue in there. And moving forward, I don't want any more blue. So I'm going to write this. I'm going to write base equals burnt umber. I'm going to put that the dark is burnt umber plus ultramarine blue. Okay. Now I want that, that, that um, glow to start. So I'm going to take my brown and I'm going to take a yellow. And I say a yellow because you can choose which hue it is based on whether that gold is a warm gold or is it kind of a cooler gold? You know, you've seen these different shades of gold. So I'm going to say it's a warm gold. So I'm going to use my Indian yellow. I'm going to mix that Indian yellow in with my brown. And I'm just going to paint it here on top in the center. So I'm using, I'm making a warm gold here. Okay. So warm gold equals, I'm going to do Indian yellow plus my burnt umber. Now I need to lighten it. And notice I'm not just going from black to brown to white. I'm going to step it a little bit. I'm going to add multiple values. So now I'm going to add some white to my brown and my yellow. But notice what happens whenever you add white to a color. It desaturates the color. It cools the color. So what I want to do is add a little more yellow to my color to help keep it a little warmer. So my yellow and brown mixture, if I'm lightening it with white, I'm going to add more yellow to it so it's not so cold. Which I'm, yellow? I'm using the Indian yellow on this one for that's, a... That's all you're using just for a warmer gold, let's say. So I'm, at, I'm writing here warm plus titanium white and more Indian yellow. In the center, I might just go white and Indian yellow. Again, see, I told you, I'm so sorry, I'm terrible about not using my palette knife. I'm a lazy, lazy painter. I should be using my palette knife, but I'm not. So Indian yellow, I'm going to add a little bit of white to just Indian yellow, and I'm going to go in the center of that and start to make it really light. And now, if I want it to glow, I've got to get bigger than the outer edges. I'm going to go outside of my edges a little bit, making it a little bit bigger. And if the paint is wet, the way to paint on top of wet paint, you have to use thicker paint. So I might have to just lay it down as a nice little glob. I'm going to clean off my brush. And then to make it really gleam, I might take white and add just a tiny bit of that Indian yellow. And I'm going to make sure I make a nice thick glob of this. And I'm going to scoop it up and plop it right down in the center as a nice glow. And if I want that glow to look like it's like really gleamy, 
I'm going to wipe off my brush and take that glob of paint. I'm going to flick it up, wipe off my brush, flick it down, flick it sideways. And I could even use my finger to just kind of blur it. Everything's a little bit wet here in this example, so it's not working yet. You might need to wait for it to dry. But once it's dry, you can rub that glow up and down, make like a starburst. I, I do that in almost all of these paintings where that glow, where it's the highlight, is really nice and, and, um, and wide and it gets really um, kind of big. It can either be a starburst or it can be a halo of dry brush around it. So that last thick bit of paint is that mostly white with a little bit of that yellow mixed in to give it that nice bright glow. Now, if I want that glow to really show up, like if I have gold that I wanna really show up on a background and I wanna really accentuate that glow, I've got to have a darker background around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that here. So there's my golds. I'm going to take I'm going to take solid blue. Maybe I'll mix a little bit of yellow in with it. I'm just going to paint a really thin layer of a darkish value here, like a green. This is just my cad yellow light and my ultramarine blue. I'm going to do the same thing I just did again, but now with a darker background rather than on a white background. Okay, so now I've got, on a, I've got a darker background there. I'm gonna take my brown. I'm gonna start with my darker value on the edges here. Just solid brown. Strip. I'll take my, I'm gonna make the cooler gold on this one instead actually. So this one, I'm just gonna take the cooler yellow. So I'll take my yellow, my cadmium yellow light is a cooler yellow Wait. and my, I'm doing a different strip. Okay. So I'm doing a different strip, the same thing, but I'm using a different yellow. So the, the first strip I used Indian yellow and brown and white. The second strip I'm doing a cooler. So I'm going to write this. This is going to be my warmer gold. So I used Indian yellow. This is going to be my cooler gold. And it's on a darker background. This is going to be cadmium yellow light. So I'm mixing that cadmium yellow light, which is my cooler yellow, now with my brown <coughs> for a nice big strip of light in the center. Mm. Then I just get lighter by adding more of the yellow and some white to the center of that. Then I get lighter again, but now I'm just using maybe cadmium yellow light with a little bit of white. And maybe this is a point where I can get a little glowy. Let's see here. Everything's still so wet. So all I've done is I've gently feathered with a dry brush around the other edges of the glow with that mix of yellow and white. But then I'm going to go in for my final step of a really light yellow and white for my glow. I want lots of, lots of this mix because I'm going to put it in nice and thick. And on a darker background, the glow is glowier. Do you know what I mean? It looks more vibrant, that glow, than on the white background. I'm going to go back to that original one and put that glow in again because everything was so wet. But even still, even though that's a warmer, that's just a warmer kind of a glow than this one. Can you see that with that lighter yellow? Or sorry, that, well, it is lighter, but it's that cooler yellow. I get that kind of cooler gold. With that warmer yellow, I'll get a bit slightly warmer gold. And you can make the glow bigger or smaller based on, you know, what it is you're painting or where it's seeing the light. But it's that gleam around the edges. And you can do that star pattern, <coughs> for example, oh, yeah, to give it that glow. Worth a million bucks now instead of 500,000. <laughs> Or you can just rub your brush in a circle around the glow and paint the highlight in the middle of the glow. Either way, to give it something, to make something look like it's really glowing with the light, go bigger than the subject and give it either that glow. And again, you can go warmer or cooler based on which yellow you use. Are you using the warm yellow or same with the browns, any of the colors. If I want a, a cooler gold, I'm going to use the cooler yellow. If I want the warmer gold, and I'm going to put in some of that warmer yellow here. So showing that the back 
background color matters a lot. The background color, but also the background value. I want to make sure if I want something to really glow, if let's say even in that eye I gave to most folks, if you want the, gl the highlight of that eye to stand out, everything around it has to be that much darker. Okay. So that's a warm gold and a cool go gold. But basically for the golds, the colors are blue and brown for the blacks, brown for my dark golds. You can see it right there in that teacup. Um, that one I might have used cadmium orange for my golds because I like the cadmium orange for a warm gold. Or you can use that Indian yellow. Mm -hmm. And then you're just making sure that you're stepping it down from dark to mid-dark to medium to mid-light to light. You know, you're stepping it down. You're not going straight from dark to light. Because if you go straight from dark to light, instead of getting that kind of a mixture, like if I went straight from this to this, it's too much of a difference between the two and see how it grays down instead of being goldy looking. I have to have that stair step in my values to stay warm and to stay relevant. Otherwise it just disappears and becomes too kind of dead. That looks dead compared to that where it's got more of a glow, I think. You know, same with this. So warm gold or cool gold, those color temperatures can matter. Look at that gold. And if it's more yellowy, it's a cooler gold. If it's more gold orangey, it's a warmer gold. So then paint it like that. You know, I could have mixed my, my cadmium rose and my yellow together instead to make an orange for that glow too. That's another way I could have done it. So there's multiple ways to do it, but that's just a basic for the gold. Okay, so skin, skin tones. And I'm going to just go over... Um, right now, uh, Caucasian skin tones, and then when it comes to African American skin tones, or um, a Asian skin tone, or uh, an, a First Nations skin tone, you know, they're just gonna. You just want to look at the color. You know, a lot of times they'll, you know, especially with African American um, skin tones, there may be an, a purple undertone to the to the skin, or a blue undertone, depending on the the color of that skin. It could be really warm. Especially with Hispanic um, undertones, there could be a lot more of a, a warm, maybe you add bur burnt sienna to that color, you know, to the mix. Um, the girl that I did from China used transparent orange iron oxide and white, made a gorgeous skin tone for her color because it was that nice, warm, kind of orangey, tan kind of glow. And then I mixed in other colors as needed for, you know, the pinks of her cheeks and her nose and blah, blah, blah. So just a standard Caucasian skin tone would be um, a, to just basically a red, a yellow, a little bit of a green to help dull or blue or purple. You know, you want something to dull it down a little bit and white. So let's, let's start with that. Let's say I'm going to do my Quinn Rose with my Indian red, yellow and white. Just starting there, I can get a wide range of colors. And they're all very vibrant. So this is, these are going to be all mixes of Quinn Rose plus Indian Yellow plus Titanium White. I can get quite a pink. If I add more yellow and less of the red, maybe a little more white, I can get quite a peach color. You know, it's all about ratios. If I add a lot of white to the color, and no more yellow, I get quite a light pink, kind of a baby color. <coughs> if I add a lot of white and a little more of the yellow, okay, that's looking very much like a little baby peach color. But those colors are quite vibrant, right? And maybe there might be tiny little bits of the, those colors in, in a face or, or in especially like that vibrant kind of reddish color, you'll see that in the ears just like that color or heck even cadmium red i use cadmium red light a lot right out of the tube for the ears um for like the bottom of the nostrils for the corner of the eye very very red and most people don't go vibrant enough for those areas but you know just really look at the at the areas and what are the tones that you see in there you know even just looking at all of us we all have different skin tones you know, even amongst people who are of a similar background, you still have very skin different skin tones. So now, what I want to do is I want to show you how to 
neutralize these colors just a little bit, okay? The easiest way, honestly, is that Viridian Green. It's such a great green. But you could always mix a green. You could try try mixing a, an ultramarine blue and an Indian yellow on its own. You get a kind of a creepy green. And then wipe off your brush and just use a tiny mixture of that green in with this skin tone that you've already mixed. Any of them. And suddenly you can see now, you get what looks a little bit more like a natural skin tone by adding a little bit of green. Just a very little, tiny little bit. If it's going gray, you've added too much. It's just a tiny little bit. What yellow did you use with the ultramarine blue? The Indian yellow. So the only colors I'm using in these mixes are Quinn Rose, Indian yellow, titanium white, and ultramarine blue for this, this particular brand of skin tone. So just adding it to those skin tones, now you get more of a, a, a desaturated skin tone color. So it's a little less vibrant. So just use it, use a little bit of green, mix in a little bit of green with your skin tones, even to the vibrant colors, just to help dull them down a little bit. I mean, those vibrant colors are really pretty, but on a portrait, they may look cartoony. That portrait may look a little too vibrant. And maybe that's the way you paint, and that's okay. Play around with that. Heck, I can use a different red. Try your quinacridone red, or sorry, cadmium red, with the cadmium yellow light. Mix that together by itself. Maybe try some white with it. It usually boils down to, usually boils down to, not always, mm -hmm. usually boils down to a red, a yellow, a white, and then something to dull it, usually a green, a mixed green or a green out of the tube. So that's cadmium red. I'm going to write this down. Cadmium red plus cadmium yellow light plus titanium white. And again, depending on how much yellow or red or white I have, I get a whole range of colors and values. And anytime I add white, I've got to think, do I need to add a touch of yellow? Is that white cooling down that skin tone too much, making it too pinky? And this is, this is a good rule of thumb, I think. Anytime you're adding white to any color, ask yourself that question. Do I need to add a little bit of yellow when I'm adding that white? And then, again, go back to um, a, a green mixture. This time, maybe just take tricerulean blue plus cadmium yellow light. Take your other blue and your other yellow and make a green. And add a tiny dot of it to your skin tone here that you've mixed and see what happens, you know? Because the cadmium yellow light and the cerulean blue are such vibrant colors and they make such a vibrant green, it may be a little too unnatural. But maybe it's exactly what you're looking for. You don't know until you do these things in your sketchbook and write it down. So it's all about playing around with that color to see what kind of mixes you could possibly get. Mm -hmm. So like if I'm, let's say doing a lip color, and if I take one red and some white, and maybe a, just a tiny bit of a yellow, and mix it together, you know, that's just gonna be too vibrant. That, that one there is Quinn Rose plus Indian Yellow plus Titanium White. Um, so then I know I have to dull it down. I'll take my blue, my ultramarine blue and my Indian yellow green. I think that's a better green for dulling down these colors. I'll add a little bit of it to my color to dull down that, that lip color. Just a smidge. And that, that's a little bit better, I think, you know, in terms of a lip color. Mm -hmm. And that was just me adding that ultramarine blue to that color. But, but, you know, in reality, I might need to mix those two reds. I might need a color that's a little bit different than what I've got. So I'm going to just go here and I'm going to just show this is a mix of Cad Red and Quinn Rose plus Titanium White. And then I'll add a tiny touch of that green to it. Maybe that would be closer to the color that I need. So don't be afraid 
to add another color if you need to, if it's gonna get you closer to the color that you need because it's a mix of the warm and the cool red. Sometimes we're between in terms of temperature. You know, try and mix as best you can with the limited color palette, but then add the colors that you need if you really do need them. So let's do that. Let's do some, some greens, like nat natural greens, like nature. Okay. Um, and you can buy greens out of the tube as well, obviously. When I'm painting plein air, my favorite green to use is a um, hooker's green because it's kind of a, a already desaturated green, um, but you can easily warm it up with yellow and you can just add white and it's instantly cool and it's just a great green for nature, I think. But it can be hard to find. So, you know, M. Graham makes a good hooker's green. Honestly, this is the one place where I usually go golden, golden brand, because the golden brand of hooker's green is darker in value than the hooker's green of M. Graham. And I like the hooker's green of M. Graham. It's a nice color, but it's so light in value. Um, and when I'm painting plein air, I want to be able to make those high dark values mm -hmm. easily because those are going to approach and, and be closer. And greens usually, if I see greens, they're usually closer to me. So I like that dark value and then I can lighten it as I go. But I use both. Just depends <laughs> on, my, on my mood. Okay, so for nature, um, we can get a variety of greens. And this is the key with painting greens in nature. You want a variety of greens. You don't want the same green throughout. So what I mean by that is, okay, I'm gonna start with ultramarine blue and Indian yellow. Okay, if I have more ultramarine blue than Indian yellow, I've got a great dark. It leans towards blue, but it looks really nice mixed in with my greens. So that's just ultramarine blue, whoops. Ultramarine blue plus Indian yellow. And the Indian yellow is transparent, so it kind of, you need more of it to really, you need more of it to impact. So I'm gonna add some more. And look at that nice kind of dullish green that I'm getting. This is great for nature. This is a great mix for nature, this ultramarine blue and um, Indian yellow. Because already right out of the tube, I'm getting some really natural looking colors. Oh, yeah. You know, if I add some, some white to the color mix, you know, then I've just got to toggle between having more or less of the yellow mixed in with that mixture to make it warmer or cooler. Now, if, I, if I'm painting a scene and I've got lots of grass, let's say, um, if I'm painting a scene of grass, I personally have found, first of all, the grass closest to me down on near the bottom of the canvas is going to be more vibrant, okay, so more saturated, warmer, so it's going to have more yellows in it, and it's going to get cooler and lighter in the distance. So for me, if I see a lawn, let's just pretend I I'm painting a lawn, and I'm using this mix of colors, this, this um, ultramarine blue, this Indian yellow, and I'm going to mix, I'm going to paint a little mini lawn right here. Down at the bottom, you know, maybe it's a little bit darker. Maybe it's in shadow or I don't know what. Now I'm going to mix more of that um, yellow in with it. I need to m put more out there. So now as I start moving up the canvas, my grass is getting lighter. It's still fairly vibrant. So now I'm going to get lighter. I'm going to add more white to the color so that in the distance, my grass is a lot lighter, and where in the bottom of the canvas, my grass might even have had little, like, grass texture, very quickly, I will stop adding any texture, because there's you're only gonna see the little grass in the foreground. As you get farther away, you will not see any of the texture in the grass. It just becomes horizontal b bands of color. And in some of those bands, in the distance, you even get, this is gonna wait for it, in the same value, I'm gonna take brown and white and add a band of brown and white here and there. Because there's almost always in grass going to be patches of the earth showing through. Mm -hmm. And so what I find is if I just paint greens in my grasses, it just doesn't look quite right. It looks like it's close, but it's not quite there. And so what I do is I paint bands 
of that brown in the same value intermixed here and there to help kind of neutralize that grass from being so vibrant with just the greens and add some some browns here and there it could be little patches of brown or it could be whole strips but when I add that brown into my grasses I find that it helps make a difference in the grass mm -hmm. now when I'm working on trees let's say I have trees in the distance and you can do any mix of green um, you know with blues and yellows play around with them to find out which one's gonna work for the scene that you're in right then and there you know maybe it's ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow light and it's a more vibrant you know green because that ultramarine blue and that Indian yellow made kind of that dull kind of muddy green more that's uh, that's more what I see a lot of times on a warm day here in the Pacific Northwest but the rest of the year, especially if it's overcast, maybe I'm seeing the ultramarine blue plus the cadmium yellow light mixed together. So I'm going to mix that batch together, play around again with the quantities. If you have a lot of yellow and very little ultramarine blue, look at that vibrant green I'm going to get. Mm -hmm. Then when I add my white, just pure white, I cool it down quite a bit. That's a very clean, pure green. If I add more of the yellow into that mix, now I'm going to get that apple, candy apple green. So very different mix with the same blue, but just a different yellow, the warm yellow versus the cool yellow. And if I'm going to do, let's say I'm gonna do some trees. So let's say I have a, a, a best, like a band of trees and I'm gonna paint them mostly with this mix of, you know, ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow light. I wanna make sure I have some darks in there. So my darks might be just that blue with a very little amount of yellow mixed in with it, or I can, mix in my burnt umber with my blue and right away if I even start adding just my burnt umber into my my greens little bits here and there along with little bits of my blue I'm starting to neutralize some of that green in a way that feels more natural and in fact when I'm looking at trees a lot of times I'm seeing oranges too so maybe I'm gonna take my brush I'm gonna clean it off it is helpful to clean off your brushes I know sometimes we don't want to clean off our brushes that much in between it is probably one of the best things you can do for your color mixing clean off your brushes in between as I'm working with a lot of greens and here I'm gonna add just some vibrant greens here and there f to some of these areas I'm doing a lot just in this one little two tree patch I'm gonna add some 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 more warm greens now I'm gonna add some of that quinacridone rose to that color to mix an orange and I'm gonna paint some orange here and there in my tree that's gonna warm up the color temperature of everything but I always find that in my trees if I have a little batch of orange here and there or the browns brown is just a darker version of orange it helps to make the trees look more plausible because when I have a bunch of greens and I don't have any neutrals in there to dull it down it looks too vibrant and unnatural um, even with skies, you know, a lot of times with skies, I think our natural inclination is to go too vibrant in the sky, you know, um, but depending on where you live, and we live in the Pacific Northwest, so I'm just going to do a little thing about skies too, since we're talking about nature here. In the Pacific Northwest, what we find, ooh, I just cleaned off the handle of my brush. That won't work. You know, your sky could range anywhere from... I'm just going to put down some white and a touch of blue. You know, it could range of anywhere from, from being that ultramarine blue and white, which to me is a duller blue, a cooler blue, to being uh, a kind of an overcast blue, which is maybe blue and white with a tiny bit of brown mixed in. That's more natural in the Pacific Northwest, where you're going to get this kind of more dullish. Sorry, what did you that's okay. So I find, okay, so here's here's titanium white plus ultramarine blue. Here's titanium white plus ultramarine blue plus a smidge of burnt umber. So I'm graying down my blue. I'm gonna see that way more often here in the Pacific Northwest. And, and in fact, at times, and one of my photos over there shows this quite a bit actually, and I'll get that later. At times you're gonna see this warmth in the sky, right? Like if you're having clouds, and you see a bit a hint of warmth in the clouds you know that might be mostly this warm grayish color which is the same mix I just had it's a mix of titanium white 
and ultramarine blue and burnt umber, but I might have more burnt umber, so I get this warm gray. Those are colors I see in our sky all the time. And, and even, heck, if it's a cloudy day, guess what I see? This is crazy. Sometimes I see it as just titanium white plus burnt umber. I see that in our sky. On a diffused kind of foggy day, that is what we see. Titanium white plus burnt umber. And it's crazy how warm that will read. You know, it almost looks pink in the sky. So a lot of times if you're in the desert, you have a totally different atmospheric light than you have here where we have a lot of humidity. I find that the top of the sky in um, Sedona is usually like a nice ultramarine blue and white mix with quite a bit of ultramarine blue. It can be quite vibrant. I'm just gonna mix that ultramarine blue plus titanium white. Now, as I go down and I start adding more white, I start adding some, some turquoise to my mix. Because as it gets lower in the sky, the light changes. And you might see this on a really hot sunny day here too. You, you know, it's just so much more rare here. But also in Hawaii, you, you might see this. Although in Hawaii, honestly, I see turquoise and pink skies a lot. So that as my color goes down and gets lighter, it almost is exclusively turquoise and white. See how that color temperature shift really kind of, it's subtle, but it would be hard to paint with the same blue.